Okay, so some important things to note. Uh, I'm going to try to be more energetic in these videos, not necessarily uh, being super duper loud or anything like that. Um, but I'm going to try to be more energetic and like talk, well maybe not like more fast because usually I have some over my words then. But like just more energetic and not just trying to be as deadpan. Also, I did technically already review these two movies but on a different channel and in videos that weren't super duper high quality. Like they had some good edits but... I like to redo it with more images of the movie helping illustrate my points in some videos I can get off like YouTube and stuff because if I try to do this thing where I like physically buy the film like off Amazon because I watched these movies through like Hulu and some other streaming sites and stuff like that a while ago but if I were to actually physically buy them uh I, I basically watch them on streaming sites that's how I was able to like rewatch them but if I actually physically bought them it would take a while to ship and stuff so to like and then the whole tease process of, like, ripping it onto, like, the computer. Not, like, actually ripping it, but doing that whole thing would just take a while. So I decided I'm just going to, like, <clears throat> redo this review and stuff like that. Um, just to hopefully improve it a bit more with my new editor, uh, my new editing software and stuff like that. So either way, I guess it's still technically Shark Month. I know it's a pretty late intro, but I'm going to try to review these two shark movies. So hopefully this might work. Who knows? Um, I believe when I first reviewed this, there was, like, the whole Mike Tyson fighting a shark thing. Either way, 47 Years Down is like you heard, about two girls doing a cage dive and ending up 47 Years Down. Despite the fact that they probably went to fight- What the fuck? How how loud are these people? Hold up. Okay, back to the video. Hopefully the fucking person doing lawn mowing or whatever. Not lawn mowing, but, like, blowing these bushes and stuff. Um, I can't believe it's that loud. Either way- Oh yeah, they end up 47 years down, despite the fact that they probably won't survive that depth. But, whatever. Either way, it was originally a straight-to-DVD movie called In the Deep, and I believe it was actually released in, like, 2016. But some studio picked it up, and now we have a potential trilogy on our hands. Because there's two movies, and the likelihood of the third one coming out is pretty high, although the second one made about $40 million against a $12 million budget, so it's possible that there might not be, but we have a potential trilogy on our hands. So, uh, thank you, Entertainment Studios Motion Pictures. What a weird name, but okay. You know what else is weird? The fact that this movie is mostly made up of girls bickering forever. You know, I can go to school for that. I guess it's summer right now, but whatever. Or just, you know, I, you know, people don't want that. Like, who the hell wants a movie about people fucking bickering for 80 minutes? Like, oh, you're a bitch. Oh, no, you're a bitch. Oh, no, we're both bitches. Why the fuck was this made into an 80-minute movie? I mean, at least it isn't as bad as I remember, but still. It's just, ugh, whatever. Honestly, I'd rather go to school than watch this film. Although I'm not sure, actually, anymore. I don't know. Either way, let's get into this film. The film starts with a girl named Kate on a floaty thing with wine, and it falls into the pool because of police, and it looks like blood. Because, guys, sharks are attracted to blood. Whoa, holy shit. Cool. I mean, it's a cool shot if only seeing me too pretentious, like, we get it. I mean, at least Jaws didn't do, like, some semi-pretentious shit like this. At least it was just, like, these two unsuspecting victims, one of which gets killed by a shark. It was just kind of like, I don't know where this is, just kind of like, okay, it's kind of cool, but, like, it kind of seems like it's beating you over the head with, like, shark attack. See, guys, blood-related sharks. There's gonna be a shark attack later. It's just, it's not terrible, but whatever. I don't really have an official opinion on the shot. But Kate points out how Lisa has a nice ass, which is like, nobody talks like that. And even if they do, reality isn't always the greatest thing. Cuties is probably a realistic film somewhere in some fucked up country. But that doesn't mean it's entertaining or not uncomfortable. Like, that doesn't mean, well, that doesn't mean it's comfortable to watch or anything like that. Like, just because it's realistic doesn't mean it's good. Realistically, murderers get, uh, murderers get away with a lot of stuff. That doesn't mean it's compelling or interesting to watch. I mean, sometimes it's fine to have a downer ending, but, you know, sometimes it's nice to see, like, the good guys winning, or just, it's not, just because it's realistic doesn't mean it's compelling or good. Just saying, like, unless it's just, just straight up trying to be a true story, then I can give that some leniency, like, that's the point, it's just straight up talking about all the facts, all that stuff. <sighs> But still, I don't know if people would exactly talk like that. Like, please consult your actors and ask if they would say something like this. And if they wouldn't, change the script. Let them ad lib, ad lib, or something like that. Turns out Lisa's boyfriend, Stuart, left her because she's boring. 
This could play into her character and eventual character arc of being more out there and leaving Stuart forever. And not trying to get back to him is the only thing she's boring. And kind of just, like, being with him basically makes her rely on validation more or something like that. And she grew up a family, grew up on, like, a poor family. And she just kind of wants validation just so she feels like she's not, like, wasting money or something like that. Or maybe she learns to love herself along with some of those other things. But nope, that requires skill in writing. They go to a party once who's made me cringe so hard I accidentally took a shit. Still, that joke. <laughs> it's a terrible montage, that's the point. It's just, it's too much. They decide to go diving, despite the fact that one of them can't dive, or at least, uh, no, I think one of them for sure can't dive, I don't know if both of them can't, but for sure one of them can't dive, but they are stupid and are like, it's fine, I'll be down there for five minutes. Yeah, but like, what about just in case something bad happens? You do realize bad shit happens, like, a lot, no matter how prepared you can be, something bad can always happen. But, um, yeah, fuck, fuck, I've been good writing. <sighs> also, why trust these idiots who offer you a cage dive? Like, you know nothing about them. But I guess the girls liked them for some reasons. We get a somewhat extended scene of them kissing. Okay, I mean, it's like, it's it's weird, because the next day, when they erupt, they act like it was nothing. I'm, like, really confused. And Lisa doesn't trust them for some reason, because she heard horror stories about going on Shady's trips. I added how convenient that the people they don't trust are Mexican. It's probably nothing. I don't know why I added that. That was fucking random but it's it's so weird like they're kissing i guess they like them kind of where they're like oh i'm so horny because i'm drunk and shit like or some stupid shit like that i don't know if being drunk actually makes you do that because i have never been drunk and i don't think i've ever been around drunk people and i don't think i've seen an accurate representation of being drunk because a lot of films that do that usually aren't accurate i don't know maybe i have but it's been a while since i've seen a film with a scene like that i don't particularly remember oh this scene has a drunk scene in it i'll note it it's just it's weird like, the next day, they're like, oh, you know, going on shady trips is weird. What about last night? I guess they were kind of drunk, but, like, I thought it just makes you, like, more confident. Well, I guess then that makes sense. Like, they're more confident. I don't know. It just feels a little totally weird and kind of pointless. Like, why did you need to show the scene of them kissing and making out? Like, it doesn't really add too much. Whatever. You meet Captain Taylor and get in the boat. Some of the people chum the waters, even though I'm pretty sure it's legal to do that. Where they are, they never specify, but I know it's illegal to do in Guadalupe. Guadalupe, and I believe they're, like, around Mexico and stuff, so, I mean, I'm not great with geography, but, I don't know, it should just be your first red flag to get out of there. We then see some sharks where the best part of the films, they truly look great, but as I reveal later, and as it's revealed later on the film, they're not in it for much, so I guess that's why they look good, because they didn't need to spend that much money on it, I guess. Whatever, they get ready, and Captain Taylor points out how when the bar goes down to, like, 50, he'll take them back, and the faster that they breathe, the faster they use up air. Great, now forget all that for the rest of the film. Oh, and also some nice foreshadowing that sharks underwater can hear your heartbeat up to five miles away, which totally won't come back later. Oh, and they grab, I think, Luis's camera, which they totally won't lose. Okay, I'm saying all this stuff like, oh, they totally won't do this, totally won't do that. It's just a bunch of stuff that's set up that's gonna, like, return. The thing with Luis's camera is gonna turn, like, really fast. Return. Again, to the cage, one of them exclaims, so you can see for miles underwater. Which I'm pretty sure isn't true. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you can see, like, way less underwater. Like, isn't it just... And even if so, water isn't exactly, like... Like, it's mostly just ocean, ocean with a few fishes, but okay. They drop the camera, like I said, and the shark eats it. Because in Hollywood, all sharks are aggressive monsters. Except for maybe John... Oh, it is kind of aggressive, but at least it isn't constantly going after them. I don't like this movie. Because every second that they see him, they're just like, Let me go after you, bitch! It's just... Okay, it's kind of excessive. Just like the sequel with the amount of slow-mo. But either way, the cage starts going down, and never once while it's falling do they try to go up through the top, but whatever. They eventually reach 47 meters down. <laughs> Get it? Title card. Kate wakes up and tries to wake up Lisa because she's bleeding and not, you know, waking up. But how would they hear each other under the intense water pressure, especially at such a depth? Like, I'm just, I'm a little confused how that would work. Like... Really? You can hear them at that depth? Lisa wakes up and starts yelling and wasting her breath. Why scream? Nobody's gonna hear you. Technically, not even your sister, Kate. By the time she's breathing normally, she wasted about five minutes of oxygen, pretty much. Great to see our, how smart our protagonists are. Also, the crane from the boat is covering the top of the cage, and apparently the two are just out of range, despite them never using earpieces or anything. Did the script just forget that? Kate goes out and tries to eventually get the crane, and actually succeeds. Weird considering usually take about 40 to 50 minutes into the film for it to work, and we're only 36 minutes in, but whatever. Kate goes up further and communicates with Captain Taylor somehow, 
Where is the earpiece or the transmission? How the hell are they communicating? Um, please explain this. Also, they were at the 55 bar like I mentioned before, which is kind of bad and sad. Like, they've only been underwater for a short while. Taylor says to Waze, Javier is going to come down with a spare winch, which they could have used earlier, and that they shouldn't race to the surface as look at the bends, which if you don't know, is an illness caused by rapid release of nitrogen gas from the bloodstream. Kate goes back to the cage and they talk, and we're nearly halfway in, and the sharks have only done one thing remotely scary. And that was like one second long, not too long ago, but still, that was just one thing for like one second. That's kind of disappointing, man. I was hoping we got a scene of like Kate being chased by the sharks or something, but nope. But hey, at least we get some nice dialogue building these characters. Brandon is a bit generic, but I'll take what I can get. Finally, the sharks appear 42 minutes in, although this particular shark does nothing but miss Kate. Which they do in, like, both these movies. Although I think more in this one, because there's four people in the sequel, like, forming characters instead of just two. So they don't miss as much. They still do, but still. And she goes back to the cage after trying to talk to Taylor again, because they thought they left. This is what you get when you only have two characters for most of the film. Have at least three or four, like I said, so there can be more deaths to ease my boredom. And the sharks don't have to constantly miss them. Actually, Eden Lake technically only had two main characters, but had the villains not miss them. Like, they were actually, like, hitting them and stabbing them. It added to the intensity, but... Eh, uh, whatever. The shark starts breaking the cage, and the second the girls go quiet, I kid you not, the shark fucking swim backwards and leaves. They can't do that! What is this movie? Hold on, let me research that for one fucking second just to confirm. They literally can't. If you pull a fucking shark back by its tail, it will literally die. So if it tries to go back, it will literally die. The only time something like this has happened was in Deep Blue Sea, and that was excused because that was treated as something like, holy shit, that's weird. That wasn't like, oh, that's a normal thing. They noticed that was weird as shit. I don't think it was explained, but the point is, sharks can't... FUCKING SWIM BACKWARDS! <sighs> Whatever. Just, they can't swim backwards. That's basic fucking research that you could have done. It takes like five seconds to search up, can sharks swim backwards? And then you would get your answer. Like, swim in reverse. They can't. That just immediately breaks all immersion and makes this movie basically a piece of shit when you can't do five fucking seconds of research. That's incompetency at its fucking best. How could you not even bother to do ten seconds of research for your shitty fucking script just to be a little less shitty? What the fuck? Just, wow. Holy shit, that is stupid and incompetent. I fucking know that they can't swim backwards. And if I had a shark scream for that and included that, that would be like a whole thing being like, oh shit, they can swim backwards. And then it might be revealed why. And it would be like some genetically modified shit. What the fuck? But I'm pretty sure some sci-fi movies don't even pull that shit because they know that's stupid. Or at least just happen to not do it. Oh my god, I'm sorry. This is just... Ugh. Lisa goes out and also gets missed by the shark, and we even get a lame jump scare. Fuck you. Yay. Lisa gets lost, and Javier, I think, shows up and tells her to get back to the cage before dying. I couldn't even process the fact that he existed in this short shot, let alone what the hell he was even saying before he died in this shitty fucking death that's going to be repeated in the shitty fucking sequel. Wow, movie, you're just... You're really just pulling out all the signs of great writing. What the fuck, okay? I get, like, it's just, it's so quick. And it pisses me off that this gets repeated. It's not even, like, a good death or anything. They get the cable and talk to Taylor. Tells him to get back into the cage. I feel so bad for you, Matthew Moody. And half your lines in this movie is just telling these idiots to get back into the cage or some shit like that. Or just pointing out their stupidity. <sighs> if only you could have pointed out this script's stupidity. Or literally anyone could have pointed it out. Uh... The cage starts going up and they start reading the amount of meters they are going in and start celebrating way too early, which is always a cliche. Like, holy shit. It's still going on today. Jurassic World Fallen King, that dude who went on the fucking ladder or some shit, he was like, yeah, I finally at Like, shut the hell up, bitch. You know there's a Mosasaurus, right? Or like, shut the hell up. Stop celebrating way too early. It's a cliche that pisses me off because it's, always, it's almost always going to show that they're going to die or something bad is going to happen. How about they either celebrate too early but then it's actually kind of successful, or just don't even do it. It's a stupid cliche that never works. It's like, wow, I wonder what's going to happen when they start celebrating too early and there's still like 30 minutes left of this movie. Well, they're going to get back up and they're going to have a lengthy philosophical discussion with the shark about how mafia people are bad, or like the morality of death. No shit, it's something bad's going to happen. It's a cliche. 
And cliches aren't necessarily bad, it's just this one's very obvious and there's no hint of subtlety to it or like maybe something else is gonna happen. Nope, they straight up just boop, fall down, bitch. But of course this rope starts breaking and instead of getting out the cage and just swimming back up, they freak out and don't stay still like Taylor asked. Also, what, is there like pressure pushing like it down? Like, how about you just swim up a bit so you're not actually putting pressure on like the bottom of the cage causing it to break. Just kind of like swim and eventually kind of like start to swim up as it's going up, you know, like in the middle of it or some shit. <sighs> I wonder how these idiots survive 20 or 30 years of life. The cage falls and messes up Lisa's leg, and Taylor tells Kate to get a second tank, but it'll increase nitrogen narcosis, which totally won't lead to the worst ending ever. Also, I just realized we're an hour into this hour and 29 minute movie, and the sharks have never done anything interesting. All they've done is miss people, act like incompetent sacks of shit. Like, it's just, what the fuck, honestly? It really feels like they either did this because they know the audience would get tired of their sharks constantly missing people, or because they originally wrote the script without them and added in them just so more people would see it. Which, I actually wrote a script, like this little skit that actually kind of pointed that out. Either way, Kate gets surprised killed by the shark without any blood to the death, so it's overall kind of lame. Now we just have Lisa and we still have 20 minutes of the movie left. I'm gonna get bored, aren't I? Jesus Christ. Alright, she goes to grab a harpoon gun that's always been there? What? Okay, I'm sorry, nobody used it to defend themselves. Could have saved Kate about 10 seconds ago. But she ends up stabbing herself without shooting the harpoon gun. I'm sorry, this is just what? This is just... Really? This is just, this is just too stupid for me, movie, okay? I'm pretty sure this is just too stupid for anyone. What? You're trying to be a scary, realistic, intense shark movie, which is cool, but you got stupid shit like this? What the fuck? How am I supposed to take this shit seriously? This is an incompetent, laughable piece of shit movie. She goes to get the tank, and even though her gauge thing is at four, she's breathing rather fast. I would hold my breath in and be like, <sighs> and pretend I did this for like 30 seconds, and then <sighs> like something like that, I would breathe much more slowly. Why are you doing this, dumbass? I'm surprised the sharks aren't here yet, because she's just letting loose a bunch of blood, and it's been going on for a while, just like, boop, 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 just, just, just going out of her fucking arm, and doesn't show up yet. Like, what? What is it? Tension or some shit? <sighs> Lisa gets Kate's tank and Kate talks to her despite them not having an earpiece. How can they hear anything? Also, how convenient that, that right after she gets the tank, she hears Kate, who, you know, died. The twist is pretty obvious if you think about it. She gets her legs out, which reminds me, she would probably get tetanus from the rust. Also, how are rust cages allowed? That's like a dang dangerous hazard, isn't that? I mean, can't they clean the cage or something? By the way, she finds Kay and they hold a flare toward off the sharks, but when they light their last flare, we get an admittedly cool shot of the three sharks as they swim around the two. They get up and, wait a minute, the Coast Guard ain't there. I know they said they'll be there in an hour, but it seems like a large chunk of time had passed then. Hmm. Obvious twist. <sighs> they then get repeatedly grabbed by the sharks in a finale that I guess Johannes Roberts thought was so cool that he'd repeat it and force him years down on Cage. Great originality, man. We'll get to that movie soon, though, even though I don't really want to. They get out and everything seems fine until I remember the whole nitrogen narcosis, well, not me, but the audience remembers the whole nitrogen narcosis thing. Yeah, she's having a hallucination. I wish the movie really ended with her laughing and saying like, oh, I got out and the sharks were like cornering her and some shit like that. Like, that'd be morbid and scary, but I guess we can't have that. <sighs> the Coast Guard appears and they all swim up with me pissed off that the sharks didn't kill any of them or the fact that they didn't do jack shit in this movie. Waste of my time, literally waste of my time. Waste of a movie, honestly. They only killed two people by pure luck or stupidity, with neither of them using their eyes. And I know people say the sharks are good, which they do, but that's because they had a decent budget, and because they were barely in it, so they didn't have to spend so much money and time making them look good, because they were in it for like two minutes. I'm just disappointed. I don't even think this fucking shark death counts as a shark movie. Like, literally. I don't think it does. They're in it for like two minutes. Like, less than half the time of from the shark from Jaws. They... It's just, it's so pointless. These sharks are so fucking stupid. If I wanted a sack of shit for a shark, I would've just took my dog on a walk and waited for it to plop one out. This is just pathetic. They're lazy sacks of shit. They just constantly miss the people. It's boring. It's uninteresting. It's gonna be shittily written. Shittily isn't a word, but I don't give a shit. 
It's terribly written. The characters are uninteresting for the most part. They never do anything besides these shallow versions of normal humans. It's pathetic. The sharks are in it for a little bit of time, which is cool, but they fucking do nothing except constantly miss these people. Like, they're fucking stupid or some shit. Like, they're genuinely, like, mentally retarded or something. Like, are they fucking retarded? Like, actually, are they just really stupid or something? Do they like being stupid? Does this writer like writing shit movies? Like, can you please write a movie with better characters? Maybe humor characters, or the sharks, where they don't constantly miss them and actually hurt them. Like, their legs get torn off or some shit. Like, real violent stuff that's like, holy shit, this is in a bad situation. Or don't fucking make this movie. Because how could you make a movie about a cage dive? Like, literally. Same thing with open water through cage dive. How can you do that? Like, what? You're obviously going to run out of things to do. So it's just like this movie idea just would never fucking work in the first place. It should have gone straight to duty. There shouldn't have been a sequel, though. I guess there's a funny sequel to laugh at now. But wow, just incompetent. Sorry for a little bit of my stumbling. But either way, wow. Just wow. Why? Why? Why even fucking bother writing good movies anymore? Look, maybe they were really trying to make a good movie. But you failed. The characters, again, are not interesting. They're terribly written. The sharks, they're also terribly written. All they do is just like, oh, oh, I'm gonna get you. Oh, no, nope. can't, sorry. We're not like an hour into this movie. Therefore, if I killed one of the main, one main characters, there would only be one left with like 40 minutes left of the movie. So, uh, sorry. It's just, it's uninteresting. There's so many problems with the movie. It's entertaining at times, but yeah, just bad, honestly. Although the sequel is worse, somehow. Fuck that movie. Terrible piece of shit movie. Oh, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next video, which might be in 47 years down on cage, hopefully. I already have the script written out, like, literally last year. But, yeah, hope you enjoyed. And, um, see you next week by the time this video comes out, hopefully. Um, and maybe I'll try to review Area 51 for the two-year anniversary of that whole Area 51 raid. If I can. But, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want. If you made it this far, um, that's cool because a lot of people don't make it f through, like, the entirety of my video. And I'm not blaming them. Like, I am a little bit boring at times. But if you did, then that's cool. I see that as improvement. Um, and if you like these videos or if you like this specific video, like it. Um, uh, there should be a playlist of my other three unknown film reviews. I haven't done too many, so I'm trying to get, like, back on track. Might have been more, actually. I don't know. I was going to do the Purge movies or like, exist, but then it didn't happen. But yeah, if you like these type of videos, watch those other three. They're a bit different in terms of format, but I'm trying to stick with this format for a little bit. Uh, maybe add more movie clips later when I actually physically get the movie and get more clips to work with. But either way, like, physically get the movie, like, instead of just having it on, like, Hulu and, like, rewatching it a few times, like, writing the script and stuff like that. But yeah, if you like it, like it. Um, you know, if you dislike it. You know, you can dislike the video if you want. You can give me some criticism. Um, tell me how I can improve. Um, if you like these type of videos, you can subscribe. This is mainly what I do. I try to make movies. I release them. And that's just kind of like my thing. I make movies and I review them. So yeah, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.